In this tutorial, we will be tackling a Taylor Swift, Swifty, Tay Tay, the Ares Tour, whatever you want to call it, inspired tumbler. I knew I wanted to make a cup for all the Swifties out there, and um, I knew it had to be very extra. I want to do something new, something edgy, something a little outside of the box, and I wanted to layer the vinyl on top of vinyl. And it has a subtle sparkle to it. I knew I wanted a little bit of glitter in there, and I'm going to explain to you how I did all of that in this video. So hang with me. Let's get started. So the three vinyls that I have chosen for this cup that came together so flawlessly and fabulously, we have Tay Tay. That was a part of the June creative kit. I have not decided if I will be putting that on the site just yet, but we do have creative kits that are left over that are listed and available. And I will link that down below so that you can find that. We also have the black and white floral pattern, the semi-transparent. That one is Decisions. That one is from the May creative kit. Now that kit is available as well next to the June Creative Kit. So those two kits right there are listed with the kits and bundles on this site. And then Rainbow Dewdrops was a part of our vinyl pack for spring 2024. That one is listed on this site and that one can be purchased separately and by itself. I decided to go with my favorite cup because there was gonna be a lot of vinyl layering vinyl wrapping. So I went with the very simple and easy selection of the 30 ounce straight. So this is a pretty simple, straightforward cup. We're going to be repeating some steps um, at least three times here. Um, you'll see me do the same thing over and over as we layer these vinyls. The first step is going to be prepping the cup. Step two, measure and split cut. And then step three, you're going to wrap and step four, trim off. One through four, we'll repeat that three times. So if you hear me say, repeat steps one through four, that's what I'm talking about. I went ahead and I measured this cup and I eyeballed it and I wrapped it right around the cup halfway. I just wanna make sure that I am perfectly wrapping this cup and there's no bubbles, I'm using my squeegee, and it's very straightforward. I'm gonna wrap these edges over. I always feel like if I wrap the edges over, you know, the curves of the cup or the lip of the cup, then I can get a better seal rather than, you know, just straight cutting it off. I want to make sure that it is stretched over. Is there any rhyme or reason to that? No, but it makes me feel like there's no bubble. So I'm going to stretch that just a little bit, and then it's going to give me a nice tight rip. Once I'm done placing my first vinyl down, I'm then going to give it a nice trim up. Once I am done trimming off my edges on this guy right here, I'm gonna repeat steps one through four to match the second part of my cup. And I'm gonna do those the exact same way. I'm just gonna freehand it, I'm gonna stretch it, I'm gonna squeegee, I'm gonna do all of those things, and I'm gonna get a 50-50 cup. Once I am done with that, I am then going to trim off my edges. I'm going to give myself a nice, this is my favorite way to trim. I don't mess with any of the gadgets or anything like that. I'm just not very good at it. I don't know if my hand's very shaky or if I push too hard, <laughs> but I feel that I get a straighter line when I can just freehand slice these little edges and stuff. It just seems a little, you know, way easier and it comes out straighter for me. Once I am done trimming this up, I will then use my washi tape I really don't use painter's tape or anything like that because I always feel like it leaves like a little bit of a residue behind. So I just stick to the washi tape. That always seems to be, you know, a safe way for me to just cleanly get that tape back off without it affecting, you know, the ink on this vinyl or pulling up the vinyl if it's too aggressive or anything like that. I just play with a nice, simple washi tape. No fuss, no muss. And it's not as expensive as your painter's tape. Once I have laid that down, I'm then gonna come back in with my blindfolded. This is my favorite way. If I'm trying to do a simple vinyl wrap and I don't want it to be too over the top or if I'm not using glitter on the actual body of the tumbler, I'm probably not gonna wanna put glitter on the base of the tumbler because I don't know, it just seems like it's too much weight at the bottom or it might be too bulky. You know, if there's no glitter on the body, then I'm probably not gonna put it on the base because then it's gonna have like a, like a ridge or something, you know what I mean? So I usually just 
default to a solid color of base, or I don't even do the base at all and I don't epoxy it, I just tape it off. But for this one right here, I'm gonna washi tape it, trim it out, and then I'm gonna come in with my blindfolded and I'm going to black out the edges. So stainless steel that is exposed will now be black. So after I have painted my stainless steel and it's blacked out, I am ready to apply my first epoxy job. So I'm gonna go downstairs out into my studio. I never really filmed this part because it's very straightforward and I've done it so many times and most people know how to do this. However, I will link a few videos here so that way if you are unsure, if you're just now getting into tumbler making and you want to see me do the epoxy job, I will list that down below. Okay, we are back a couple days later. I have had a chance to let this spin, let this cure, and I'm back with from my first epoxy job. It's nice and glassy looking. It's very beautiful, very pretty. I did not sand this. I know sometimes we say, okay, once you're done with your, you know, epoxy for the first round, you want to come back and you want to add your finishing touches and you will sand this because you want to get it nice and smooth. Not in this case, because I am going to be putting down a transparent vinyl on top of it. So if I were to sand this and then I put my transparent vinyl down, it's going to look scratched up and it's not going to be covered. If you sand and then you epoxy on top of your sand job, those sand marks go away. In this case, we don't want to do that because we will not be able to epoxy those sand marks. Get what I'm saying? So leave it alone. Plus you should have a non bumpy epoxy job because this is straight vinyl. All right. All right. Moving on. Okay. So now that we have our epoxied cup, I'm going to layer my vinyl on top of my vinyl. I'm going to do the same measurements and I'm going to do the same steps again, one through four. You're probably seeing, Hey, there's some glitter on there. Uh, I thought she said no glitter. Yes. Sometimes when I want to have just a subtle sparkle, I will contaminate purposely contaminate my cup with some glitter from a cup that I am epoxying with this cup. So I epoxy in batches. I won't just go out there and epoxy cup one at a time. I usually take a few cups with me. And if I see that there's a cup that I don't mind getting some glitter on here and there, I will purposely contaminate it with a cup that needs to be sealed. So I'll pick up glitter from another cup and then contaminate it onto this cup. It's a nice little trick I like to do. It's not so much of dumping the glitter on. I don't like that look, it's too heavy. I wanted a nice subtle sparkle. And so that's what I did here. Now that you have done your steps one through four and you've layered, you've squeegeed, you've placed, you've selected, and you've trimmed and all that stuff, now you can come in here and you can stripe it. So I decided to go with a black and like a, um, I don't know, I wanted to pick up some of the blacks that were on this black and white floral, but I didn't want it to just stay black and have like a black void, you know, like a border. So I went and I grabbed some hot pink vinyl as well. And I stripped that and striped it right next to that black. So you have a double striping going on here. And then that's it. Now you can take this up a little bit farther. You can add like some bling to this or you can add some glitter, but I'm really liking the simplicity of this cup. I like the visual texture and the layering and how the lights from the rainbow dewdrop vinyl look like it's like twinkling lights. Is it like rain? Is it fireworks? We don't know. Like it, it is whatever you want it to be. And it's beautiful and I love it. And I love how the flowers look like they're kind of in front of those lights. It's just a lot of visual texture and depth going on here. So it's my concert cup. This is my Eras cup, my Tay Tay cup. This is a very easy and quick, very beginner friendly kind of cup. So I encourage you to see what you can make with the vinyls that you have. This cup is for sale. I will be listing this down below. If you have any questions, comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I love to hear from you guys like and subscribe that tells me that i'm doing a great job until then have a great rest of the week and i'll be seeing y'all soon bye